Centre half back for Adelaide. Very important possession. Watson's got it. Watson goes for goal. Look at this. Back with the last down. Essendon are home in the preliminary final. Thanks to a goal kicked by Timmy Watson. Hi everyone and welcome to the very first podcast here at Essendon Footy Club called Always Striving, a history of Essendon Footy Club with me, Gregor McCaskey, the uh, manager of Heritage here and my co-pilot Dan Eddy, football historian and author. G'day Dan. G'day Gregor, exciting season ahead for us and for the team hopefully. Very much so. Today we're going to delve into uh, the very first Um, week of the season which is Essendon v Adelaide round one and we're going to have a look back at some of the more memorable games between Essendon and Adelaide. Uh, Some of the stats, some of the players and some of the controversies I reckon it's going to be quite a ride Danny boy. It will be yeah and we've had a few good games with Adelaide over the years but obviously the history doesn't go back quite as far as it does with some of the other teams we'll play this year like the Magpies and the Blues and the like but uh, still a a couple of uh, worthy games worth discussing. Quite right. Well, we've played, just for the statistician uh, types out there interested, we've played 37 times against Adelaide since 1991, and the win-loss record is very, very even. They're one ahead. They've won 19. We've won 18. So a win this week in round one uh, will make it all square. We won the one that mattered, though, didn't we? We'll talk about that soon, but we won the real important one yep. back in 93. Yeah, you're getting ahead of yourself, Danny. You can see how excited he is. Yes, we'll be there. We'll be there in a minute. They've called it the comeback story. It's only the first chapter, but what a beautiful chapter it is for the Bombers. They win by 25 points. Memorable round ones. Round one, I can think of two or three. The very first game that we played, round one, v Carlton in... When was it, Dan? Round one, v Carlton back in 1873 on the 8th of June. We were just a a junior team at the time, I guess, just making our way, and we played a second 20 uh, of Carlton's uh, side. Mm -hmm. Uh, John McCracken, the famous McCracken family, he kicked the first and only goal of the game, and... uh, we got a win first up. Like a soccer score, 1-0. Yeah, mm. another great uh, great kickoff start for uh, Essendon. Another first uh, game, round one, was Essendon v Geelong. Very first game in the VFL. And of course, people will, many people will know that Essendon was one of the inaugural VFL teams that uh, formed in 1896. The very first game we played in 1897 was at Cario Oval against Geelong on the 8th of May, 1897. Again, Essendon won by 23 points. And what's interesting about that game, Dan, is that one of the Geelong players, Teddy Rankin, is a relative of one of Essendon's greats, Gary O'Donnell. Wow. And 100 years later, for the centenary, Gary O'Donnell played in the centenary reenactment of that game. Is he um, that I think he might have yeah, been. I think he might have been. In, 18, uh, in 1996, so 100 years later, Gary O'Donnell playing 100 years after his uh, great-uncle Teddy. That's remarkable, isn't it? Amazing statistic. You've, uh, you've done well there. You, you have had a busy summer if you've been digging that sort of stuff up. Yes, very busy. I never stop. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Jump ahead to 1922, first round at Windy Hill, the first game at uh, what would become our famous home ground uh, at Essendon. Finally, uh, we got a team in the suburb, a VFL team in the suburb of the same name. So that was against Carlton as well, 6th of May. Uh, done some research on that for various uh, books and it would have been just an amazing experience to have been in the suburb watching the crowd just flood up the uh, up Napier Street and up, up the hill there. And, and then there was still a tree or two around the stadium, around the ground then, and the, there's a... There's a good photo of the kids up in the tree getting yeah. <laughs> getting a view of the game. Uh, and it was worthwhile. Essendon won by 18 points that day to kickstart our wonderful time at Windy Hill. And just picking up on the popularity of that move, to, I was going to say back to Essendon, but it wasn't. Um, it was really to Essendon for the mm. first time. Picking up on that, membership went crazy that year. It was the biggest, the highest membership the club had ever had. So the move to Essendon was really yeah. uh, very, very popular indeed. Another great round one game. Um, and many, many people who uh, who are Essendon supporters know about this is John Coleman's round one, 
game against Hawthorne in 1949, 16th of April, Windy Hill at Windy Hill. And of course, Coleman kicked an, a, just astounding 12 goals that day, never been matched or beaten since. Just a remarkable, um, remarkable performance. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, <laughs> reading about Dick Reynolds' comments on it after the game, and he was blown away by they were they were hopeful that he'd uh, that he'd play well Coleman but uh, <laughs> I think after that first game Reynolds said we're, we're on to a basically onto a superstar here so <laughs> they uh, the pressure was on after that first game uh, Dick himself had made his debut in a, in a round one game back in 1933 as well um, against the Bulldogs out at Western Oval he kicked a, a goal with one of his early kicks and um, it's a funny story that his dad wasn't allowed in the in the ground, he had a couple of drink that morning because they were congratulating him on his son playing his first game. And he got to the ground, and his wife said, "You're not coming in." So he had to watch Dick's first game in that round one match against uh, Footscray, which we lost by a goal. Um, he had to watch that from uh, the overpass on the on that southern end. Uh, yeah, the southern end is it of uh, of the Western Oval there? I'd never heard that story. That's a good one. You better read my book. Yes, I'd better. All good bookstores, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and the other ones. <laughs> Uh, there isn't one more, actually, uh, just before we move on. One more round one game. After we won the flag in 1942, we uh, we unveiled the flag the next year at, at Windy Hill again uh, against South Melbourne, who were a bit annoyed with uh, their loss against us in the 42 preliminary final and, and some things that our uh, our great centre forward, Ted Lahane, might have, uh, might have done on the field in that game to get us over the line. So... The appropriately named uh, Jack Basher Williams from uh, South Melbourne thought he'd exact some revenge against uh, against the Bombers in round one. So he certainly did that. He, I think he may have copped eight weeks for the, the various uh, round arms that he might have given to Lahane and our and our uh, our legend uh, Dick Reynolds and the like. And Dick's brother. Dick's brother was uh, watching from over the fence and uh, according to Dick's sister, he was uh, had to be restrained from jumping the fence and going and uh, backing up his brother. So uh, that was a fiery opening to that game yep. and I believe we may have won that game as well. He wasn't, wasn't having a drink with Dick's, Dick's dad, was he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we might need a drink after this. <laughs> <laughs> There's been plenty of guys that have played for more than one club and plenty of Essendon players that have played for us and someone else. It hasn't been too many players that have played for both us and Adelaide, Dan, because we haven't had uh, the same kind of history with Adelaide that we've had with some of the, the longer clubs, or so more established clubs, of course. But four that we've that have played for both clubs are Greg Anderson, played for us uh, from 88 to 92, and Adelaide from 93 to 96. Had the great mullet, uh, Greg Anderson. I think he was on the wing for us maybe in the 1990 grand final, Gregor, and then... He crossed to Adelaide when, when did you say at the end of '92, and he was in Adelaide's side when we beat them in the preliminary final. So he he, uh, he didn't have much luck. Didn't, didn't have the best time of it. <laughs> and then there was uh, Sean Wellman. Everyone will, will remember and still know of Sean Wellman. He, uh, he's, as you said, he's on the board now, and he uh, he played with the Crows first of all, 1994, 95. He was there for 34 games, and then he came to the Bombers in what was a pretty complicated trade with Paul Barnard and Paul Salmon. I think there was a three-way trade that happened with those guys. So Wellman came to us and he played another 166 games between 96 and 2004, kicked 25 goals and he was one of our key defenders in that famous 2000 grand final. He was. Uh, Hayden Skipworth of course uh, played for both clubs, Dan and Hayden's still here as one of the coaches here at uh, Bomberland. Hayden played from 2001 to 2006 in Adelaide, and I think people were surprised. He played 44 games there. I think there was some surprise when um, he uh, he left and came across here to the Bendigo Bombers, and he did look. He played well enough. He looked pretty good. And uh, Matthew Knights, who was coaching at the time, um, um, elevated him, and he ended up playing 11 games in 2009. Yeah, and he probably is biggest contribution for us he's off the field he's been uh, very very great with the development of some of our younger players and uh, and continues to do so so it's uh, we were lucky to pick him up sure has and then the other one was uh sean mckernan he was at the crows from 09 to 14 uh, played 34 games for them the brother of uh cory mckernan two-time north melbourne premiership player and almost brownlow medalist with james hurt he was, <laughs> he right. was ineligible but he <laughs> He would have had a three-way tie with Fossey and Hurdy. Um, and then he came to Essen in 2015, 
15 and played has played 18 games. That's right. Sean McKernan and, uh, yeah, so pinch hitting in the ruck and, uh, and moving up forward as well. Interesting, Dan, that of the four, only four that have played for both clubs, two are still here, Sean and, uh, and Hayden, still here. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. One fellow that we haven't mentioned who wasn't a player at both clubs, uh, Dan, but has coached at both clubs, and that, of course, is Robert Shaw, a very astute uh, coach and a very fine under- uh, reader of the game. Uh, Robert played 51 games for us, um, coached here for quite some time, also coached, had coached in Tassie and coached under Kevin Sheedy for a long time here at Bomberland and then was senior coach, or prior to that was senior coach at Fitzroy from 91 to 94 and was coach of Adelaide in 95 and 96. Yeah, and he was assistant coach uh, to Kevin Sheedy at our, in our great era of that 90, uh, 99 to 01 period and uh, Matthew Lloyd interestingly credits Shorey and uh, and I guess his fellow assistant coaches with turning his accuracy around. He was a he was a good kick for goal, but Shorey said after a game, and I think it was 1999. After a game, he said, "Lordy, you're going to uh, cost us a final one day because of your kicking." And Lordy's leading the goal kicking, I think, at the time, but his accuracy wasn't great. And uh, so he worked closely with the assistants after that and uh, was shaming him, I guess, in that team meeting that helped to uh, just make him realise that he needed to work even more on his goal kicking and he won two Coleman medals after that. And his accuracy went up to something like 70% from maybe 55 60%. So it was a pretty significant period for Hurdy and Shorey was the instigator of that, uh, for Lloydy, sorry, and Shorey was the instigator of that. Well, if that's the only thing he brought to the table, <laughs> it was a, a, a stellar contribution, a terrific contribution <laughs> to, the, to the club, and of course a lot more than that. And he's a great lover of Essendon's history and footy history, Shorey, so he's always very passionate Definitely I'm sure he's listening in, so uh, hello Robert Shaw. Yes, yeah, so he, he loves the game, that's for sure, and the history of it. Our boys who play this grand old game are always striving for glory and fame. Let's talk about some um, memorable games between Essendon and Adelaide. The very first time we played them was round four in 1991, and it was the only time that we played them at Windy Hill because, of course, at the end of 91, Essendon uh, pulled up stumps and didn't play at Windy Hill, didn't play a senior game at Windy Hill after that. So that was the only time that Essendon and Adelaide played at Windy Hill, Essen get up that day by 16 points, despite the fact that they had some uh, the walking wounded towards the end of the game. Yeah, considering we had 32 shots that day to uh, 21, they were probably glad they didn't play too many games at uh, Windy Hill during that period. The big one, though, Gregor. <laughs> yeah, I can just see you just dying to get into this. Oh, yeah, it's, yes. one of, it's my second most favourite Essendon game of all time. All right, well, let, let's we'll, <laughs> we'll give we'll give Danny's head here. It's been one of the most remarkable games in the long history of this great game to be seven goals behind at half time. That's it. We're going to talk for a minute about um, the great 1993 preliminary final against uh, Essendon and Adelaide on the 18th of September where Essendon got up um, really didn't look like they were going to do it at all there were seven goals down at half time and there's all sorts of twists and turns in this story it's a remarkable story plus a funny one at the end that we throw in Dan what do you remember of it? I remember being a kid and being pretty devastated at half time thinking we were uh, my my dream was over and I was going to have to face the kids at school the next week and and uh, cop it because I've been bragging that we were going to walk into the grand final so that was my first memory but uh, just half time just being completely outplayed and Adelaide just having an answer to everything that we were we were throwing at them which um, yeah it was uh, but then they just late in that second quarter we just seemed like we were thereabouts, but we just couldn't break the damn wall open. If you, so uh, Adelaide were doing enough to hold that momentum and uh, to go in at halftime leading by 42 points, it didn't look very good at all. I've got a quote here from Gavin Wanganeen, Dan, and uh, what Gavin said was, and this is, this is Gavin's words, she'd spilled his heart out to us at halftime. He was talking about how our families, our wives, our parents, 
are all in the stands watching. Go out there and play for them, he said. That was part of it. That was very motivating and emotional. He just got us going. He sure did. Certainly did. There was another quote as well that um, Sheeds turned to Tim Watson, who he'd got back that year, and he turned to Tim and he said, Tim, is this how you want your career to finish? Is this uh, this how you want to go, go out? Is this how you want to be remembered as a, as a loser in a preliminary final? So he was uh, the motivation mm. that he used. And he wasn't just it wasn't just Sheeds. Uh, apparently Mark Thompson was really critical. Mark Harvey's told me that Bomber, as captain, pulled them in and really let them know that we're not out of this yet. So uh, the, the leaders at that point, and Tim would have been another one, uh, were really critical as well in, in giving that message of positivity at halftime. Go short with a chip one. Ooh, probably should have done better. Bickley Buick will kick a goal. Go and does. You know, memories were of halftime of, you know, being seven goals down and um, getting a stare from Bomber Thompson and really him showing the first sign of him being a really good coach, getting some stern words from him and then getting followed up by uh, Kevin in, in terms of a, a half-time speech and just giving us reassurance that if we did a few things a little bit better, then we were a chance to get over top of him. And they come out after half-time and there's one bloke who was clearly inspired and that was Michael Long. Handball wide for Long, backs himself. A couple of really early bursts out of the centre that he does early in that third quarter, which you just thought, hang on, he's about to break free here and something's about to happen. And he, he set up two or three goals instantly. I think he might have kicked the first, then he passed one to Salmon. So there was some a couple of really big plays and that just helped to turn the momentum. And we had a sharpshooter called Darren Buick who was... Just uh, finding target, he ends up with six goals. Finished with six today, that's right. Uh, Gary O'Donnell played a great game as well, and he mm-hmm. kicks. We just got on the on a roll, and there was, I think it was in that quarter when Andrew Jarman for Adelaide missed a sitter from 10 metres out in in the front of the goal square, and that's when uh, I think it was a real moment when Adelaide, not a drop-your-head moment, but a real deflating moment, and um, by then we'd built the momentum. Buick going for his third, drop punt, he's got it. Early in the last quarter, we hit the front, and they say that the goal that put us in front, which I think was an end-to-end goal, and it was all the young players all got their hand on it from memory, and Mercury kicked the goal, and every player who played in that game who I've spoken with said that it's still the loudest roar they've ever heard. It still sends the chills up on your on the back of your neck. Taken by Carthel, Mercury goal, goes for it, sits back. You better jump on YouTube and check out that game after you've listened yeah. to us because uh, you, you'll be up jumping around as well. It's a really key moment. And uh, yeah, so, and then what happens with that last ceiling goal? Do you, do you remember that one? Uh, Tim Watson, right towards the end? Could be, yeah. Yeah, Timmy. Bob's up, uh, decided he didn't want to go out a, a loser in a preliminary final, so uh, he had a crack on his left foot, which didn't go too well, and that, right, that fell short. Yeah, yeah, that's right, but the great man that he is, uh, exhausted no doubt, but he played on, uh, followed up, grabbed the ball uh, at about 50 metres out and just threw it on the boot, and it just sailed through, and I think I don't think there'll be an essence support that will ever forget that moment when uh, he put us that extra few points ahead and we uh, we won we were into the grand final very important possession Watson's got it Watson goes for goal the universe back in the last down Essen to the home in the preliminary final thanks to a goal kicked by Timmy Watson now look if there's any kid he's listening just turn away at this present time because I'm going to use a word that you don't want to normally use around the house oh, look out. but <laughs> But there was an article written some years ago um, relating to this very uh, this very game, and there's a, a strange story as to what might have been uh, the, the deciding factor in the in the game turning towards Essendon's way. And I guess, for want of a better term, and I hope um, youngsters take this um, you know turn away at this point. Um, for want of a better term, it was the fart that cost the flag. <laughs> what was that? A fart. The fart cost that the cost the flag. And wasn't it Greg Anderson who was uh, involved in it? It may well have been, Dan. Uh, fancy that, eh? Uh, 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 an Essendon and Adelaide man. This is Mark Bickley's uh, quote as to what happened, and he said, this has become footy folklore, and I play it up a little bit, Mark says. 
Greg Anderson was working for a company, I won't mention them, at the time, and he had us all on these powders and mixtures which did play havoc with everyone's gas. I think people know what we mean by that. Just before we went out after half time, Cornsey pulled us into a tight pack and someone let one go. <laughs> I don't think it was me, to be quite honest. I don't know why Mark Bickley would have said that, because I think you'd know if it was you. I don't think it was me, to be quite honest, Mark Bickley said, but I haven't denied it because I can't remember. That sounds like someone ducking for cover. <laughs> anyway, someone let off gas while he was trying to be serious, presumably Corns trying to be serious, and delivered this great speech, and everyone was holding your nose. Wet their nose. When you get into that tight huddle, it's not a great place to drop one. It's worse than an elevator. <laughs> I imagine it would be. Now, if, if that's what costs them, the, cost them the, uh, the grand final, well, too bad. We thank Greg Anderson if that's the case. Don't yes, we? And, and the company that he was working for. Yes. Thanks, Greg. And uh, <laughs> thanks for that rundown, Mark. <laughs> it's been one of the most remarkable games in the long history of this great game. To be seven goals behind at half time. That's it. Final recap of the preliminary final uh, result. Dan Essendon 17-9-111 defeated. Adelaide 14-16-100. 76,380 were at that game. It's the biggest crowd to attend an Adelaide and Essendon game by almost 26,000 people. Um, The next biggest was um, marginally over 50,380. Buick kicked six, as you mentioned. Salmon four, and great the great Tony Modra kicked six that day. He he was having a, he was having a good time of it. And coincidentally, it was the last game that Derek Kickett played for Essendon because, of course, he didn't yes. play in the grand final. It was dropped controversially uh, before that game, and that was the end of his uh, time at uh, Essendon. The greatest winning margin over Adelaide Dan was only a couple of years later in 1995 at the MCG. We kicked 142. That was 21-16, 142. Adelaide 8, 12, 60. It was, um, interestingly, Matthew Lloyd's Essendon debut, and he joined that rarefied company where kicking a goal with his first kick of league football oh, in that game. And Paul Salmon that day finished with eight goals. Now, he didn't play a lot of games uh, that year. Um, Lloydy, he was back the following year, and against Adelaide again in 96. Uh, he'd played, I think, three or four games, recalled late in the year, and had a tremendous game. He was still 18, 30 possessions, 13 marks, and kicked seven goals, and he said... I remember my first breakout game was the, uh, was, it was a game against the Adelaide Crows. I'd come off a broken thumb, so it was year two. I was having an okay first quarter, and James Hurd actually patted me on the shoulder and said, it's, tire, it's your time. It was only game 10, but he said, if, if you need to sit on my head, sit on my head, because I reckon you're holding back. And it was probably the greatest thing I needed because I, I was idolising too many blokes I was playing with. And I actually kicked seven goals in my 10th game. And it was then that I got my first best on ground. And um, I, I believe that I belonged at AFL level. Thanks, Herdy, for uh, just giving him the pat on the yeah, back. Yeah, definitely. Uh, went on to become one of our great, greatest ever full forwards. Sure did. And finally, Dan, it's still 20 years ago for this game, Essendon defeated Adelaide, round 22, 1997, on the 31st of August at Princess Park. And a number of um, significant things from that game, it was the great Mark Harvey's last game, his 206th and final game at Essendon. He only played six games that year, and that was uh, the previous five that he played had been in losses so I'm glad that we mm. that Mark got out on a on a win I turned 32 midway through the season uh, mentally I was just struggling to deal with performance uh, therefore I was inconsistent and it was really challenging me personally as to whether I was going to play on or, or retire. I walked in the Shooters' office and I made a decision that I wanted to retire. I said, I want, I want to play you in round 22. And I said, what for? I said, I'm big enough. I can make my own decisions now. Uh, I've had enough. I want you to play in round 22 because it's my 400th coaching game. I want to make a big thing of what's been a disappointing year. You've been staunch. You've been, you could have gone to other clubs. Uh, played in three winning premierships, your loyalty and your trust and all those sort of things. 
that's that's the way I want to send your way. So he was always big on sentiment, wasn't he? Uh, Very much a, 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 a keen um, a keen feel for for that kind of stuff. Very, very good. Uh, just coincidentally, this is a, an interesting one. It was the day that they put up on the big screen, or no, rather a grown announcement, I think, that um, Diana Spencer, the Princess of Wales, had been injured uh, seriously in a car crash on the same day. So it was quite a, it was a sad day for that, of course, but a historic day uh, yeah. for Essendon. Plenty happening, that's right. Plenty. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Mark Harvey on his last game, accompanied by Renee Chelsea, Sherman Dixon, and Tim Harvey. Let's hear it for the great Mark Harvey. 205 games, 16 finals, 6 of origin, twice all Australian, 1982 Western Fair, leading goal to the 1985, premiership player, 84, 85, 93. The one and only, the I'm sure in the, you know, Hubs is back here working now as an assistant coach and Sheeds are still around and they can't get rid of each other but I'm sure the, the bond between those two has been very special all the way through, premierships, um, some tough losses as well and they've uh, they've been there together so that was a pretty appropriate way for Hubs to yeah. finish. It's just a phenomenal way to finish a career and it was a great tribute to the coach and how he sent away his players and and what it means to you because I have had that many people come up to me, more so resident people, but they've come up to me and said that they were there or they remember that last game for, for many reasons. So if you want to send off, that was it. So the siren might sound before the bounce of the hands. And look at the Bomber fans. They rise as one. They run to Mark Harvey as well. Mark Harvey in his last game. Well, just about uh, wraps it up for today. Dan, I... Can't, obviously can't do justice to what 25 nearly 30 years of football between two very fine clubs but I think we've touched on some um, interesting people uh, some interesting games uh, a bit of controversy here and there and uh, we'll be back soon with uh, another one yeah and fingers crossed that uh, we can uh, have a win this weekend and uh, tie up the ledger at 19 wins apiece I'm sure we can thanks for listening everyone to the loo